Bai Hui Ben is soon going to move to a new village close to the mouth of the tiger. We fought for years against the sand. And this is our new house. The whole village will soon move here. The house is more solidly built against the sand and has electricity and water. Life here is better and more comfortable. Like all his neighbors, Bai Hui Ben could no longer stand the daily fight against the encroaching sand. Over hundreds of kilometers, an army of peasants are fighting to seal the breach of the mouth of the tiger. Through this breach pours the sand which threatens to submerge the oasis and to annihilate it. Before, there was just moving sand everywhere. Here in the Badanjaran desert, the sand moved fast and caused a lot of problems in this area. What did you do to improve the situation? Beforehand, there was moving sand which flew everywhere, and we started fighting desertification in autumn 2008. We mobilized a thousand people to stabilize the sand. The first step was to stabilize the sand with blocks of straw before planting. Up till now, we've planted trees over 6,670 hectares. You've been working here six years? Yes, since 2008. You've done well. To plant the trees, Dr. Liu Chuzong developed a new plastic mesh to block the sand, which was quicker to put in place than blocks of straw and very economical. This mesh really stops the wind from moving the sand, as you can see from afar. With this method, there are no more sandstorms. Yongshu comes from the desert of Xinjiang. It's a type of tree which we've used at Minqing, using our institute's techniques. In the northeast and northwest of China, our technique with the Yongshu is also used. The Gansu Desert Institute has experimented with over 700 different plants. It also uses the suo suo, which grows in the deserts of Qingzhuang at the borders of Tibet. Highly resistant, the suo suo also uses little water and only needs to be watered when it is planted. The suo suo grow like this after three years. The plantations of the mouth of the tiger have worked. The sandstorms that threaten Beijing have diminished markedly over the last few years. On the Western Front, the Battle of Minxin is a first victory. To win the war, a program of reforestation launched in 1978 led to the plantation of 30 million trees, the equivalent of the land surface of Great Britain. And it will take several more decades of work to complete the Great Green Wall, which should protect Beijing. A second battle is being led on the northern front. This is against the sand dust of the Kupuchi Desert in the province of Inner Mongolia that regularly strikes the capital. The roads that cross the Kupuchi Desert are regularly invaded by sand. New plantation techniques are being tried. Thanks to this solution, it only takes a few seconds for two people to plant a tree. In a day, we can plant up to 1,500 cuttings. In the past, there was only sand in the air. When it was windy, you couldn't even open your eyes and you couldn't see the road. The Kabuchi Desert is the one that affects the storms that hit Beijing the most. 
Before, we had 70 to 80 every year. Today, after years of work, there are only three to five. Beijing suffers a lot less. Beforehand, we only worked manually, without any machines. I didn't know how to plant trees. Often I'd dig a hole and the sand would just fill it straight up. In 2007 and 2008, we learned how to plant using pressurized water. We put this straight to use and planted a lot more trees. According to official figures, this new method gives a survival rate close to 85% compared to 55% in the past. The wall of young trees now stretches out for kilometers. Thanks to this, it has been possible to build roads across the desert which no longer become buried. And Mr. Chung never gets tired of watching the cars go by. The Great Green Wall is fragile, and only time will tell if it will be able to resist the pressure of the desert. In the urgency of the 1980s, trees were chosen for their ability to grow quickly and absorb greenhouse gases. Poplars, which should live 30 years, didn't survive. Why did these poplars die? Because they require certain conditions to live. Water has to be sufficient and the ground fertile. So if the water table drops and it becomes arid, they'll die. The calculation which led to favoring these types of tree which grow quickly in the hope of greater efficiency wasn't the right one. That there is the local poplar which grows very quickly, is tall and blocks the sand heading for Beijing. The downside is that it has quite a short lifespan. That's why we're cultivating instead Zhangzi Zong pine trees, like this one. They adapt to the sand, have a longer lifespan and also hold back the sand from the storms. It's a very good type of tree. If just one type of tree is planted, there's a greater danger of sickness than if you mix two types together. The great lesson that China has learned from its successes and failures is that there is no universal recipe for containing the desert. Each parcel of land has its own types of tree and techniques of plantation. The Great Green Wall isn't a monolithic monument, but a mosaic. Come on, hurry up. We're still collecting the dead trees that haven't survived the aridity, the heat and the wind. Conditions are very difficult. We've planted several kinds of tree, like Chung Su Song, woodland pine, Shen Tao, wild peach, and Shaliu, sand willow. Shaliu adapts best, then Shen Tao. For Chung Su Song, woodland pine, it's more complicated. The tanker makes intensive watering possible when planting, but the water is very quickly absorbed. The solution is programmed drip feed watering in the middle of the desert. We water this type of pine twice a week during the first year. Then the second year, we water it once every two weeks. In this zone, there are around 200,000 pines. The drip feed network extends for hundreds of kilometers. It's a heavy investment, but the results are there. The trees take root and wildlife returns. <laughs> 